Welcome to the Scratch Your Own Itch Podcast, the show about the things we think about but don't ever talk about. My name is Logan Tyler Nelson, and I'm your host. These conversations are about creating a life worth living, with a focus on sharing stories about battles in our heads. Topics range from depression, addiction, self-doubt, past traumas, and everyday compulsive thinking. And my hope is that this show will just shed some light on anyone in the dark that feels like they're alone in their daily struggles. Please take note that this show is not meant to be a replacement for a professional diagnosis or professional therapy. I am not a counselor or a therapist. Okay. I'm going to get really honest with you. I really blew it. Everyone knows it. I've written a lot about failure. I might have even deluded myself into thinking I am destined for a degree in failure. I'm like Dr. Failure. I know exactly what you need to do if you want your roommates to hate you, if you want your licenses to get suspended, If you want to isolate yourself and lose friends and also be the best money waster ever. I know how to binge eat. I know how to be super obsessed with things. I know how to also go from thing to thing to thing and really never finish it. I know how to start things really well. I once was a king at doing all this failure work and then I realized something. Failure is a perspective. Okay, let me explain. I mean, I once knew a girl who was beautiful. Although she saw the world in terms of attraction and attention. Everything from job offers to getting discounts at restaurants to dealing with nagging customers. I mean, if someone was rude to her, it wasn't because she was, you know, intimidated. Or that someone was, you know, intimidated by her If someone was rude to her, it was because they were obviously just intimidated by her beauty or their own lack of beauty. If someone was kind of, you know, nice to her and gave her a smile, it was because, well, it was because of her beauty. And they probably admired her because, well, they wanted to get in her pants. So she measured herself through her beauty and attractiveness, and naturally she measured her self-worth by people in it. And so she saw the world as the only way to be of any substance at all was by their beauty or their attractiveness. I also knew a duder back in high school, who was a loser. I'm not trying to be mean, but he was just socially awkward, and no one really liked him. I I mean, I tried to become friends with him, and he just kind of pushed me away. But he saw the world as this popularity contest, a contest that was perpetually losing everything from how much he earned at work to the poor service he got at hotels to the people who didn't laugh at his jokes. If someone was rude to him, it wasn't because they were, well, cooler. They were just not able to understand him. If someone was kind to him, though, it was because they saw how much of a loser he was and took pity on him. And perhaps... They were just bigger losers than he was. So he really gauged himself through his social status. And he measured the world and the people in it through their social status. So why do we judge others? I once read this uh, article about the ways we choose to measure the value of our own lives by Eric Baker. Some of us measure our life through money, accolades. Others measure it through beauty and popularity. 
Others measure it through family and re relationships. Others measure it through service and good deeds. Chances are you take note of it through some combination of all these things. But one in particular matters the most to you. One stands out and determines your happiness more than others. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I realize now? How important it is to measure ourselves by defining a personal measurement of success. I've kind of talked about it before. A key to the success is when you're looking through that social media of yours and no matter what you're scrolling through, it could be someone just booked an awesome episode on a TV show, maybe they signed a mortgage on their new house, bought a gym, or maybe signed a book deal. You know, if it makes you feel jealous, then you may not have clearly defined your personal measurement of success. And that stinks, because it really makes you feel like a loser. I'm not saying that you can't be motivated by seeing what other people's success is like, but I'm just saying that the more external our measurements for our own value and self-worth, the more we screw everything up for ourselves. So I think we've got to sort of change this perspective lens we look through. And for ourselves, if that perspective lens is how we see the world, well then, it's kind of like when you buy a red Toyota and all of a sudden all you see is a bunch of red Toyotas, well, that's the same thing we can look through while we have our perspective lens on. So if you gauge your family by your family relationships, then you will measure others by the same standard, how close their family is to them. You know, if they're distant from their family or don't call home enough, You'll judge them as, well, bad people, ungrateful, deadbeats, or irresponsible, regardless of their lives or their history. So if you measure your life by how much fun and, and partying you can have, then you will measure others by the same standard. How much fun and partying they have, too. You know, if they prefer to stay home and listen to Tony Robbins lectures every week at You'll judge them as inhibited. You'll judge them as, well, just scared of the world or lame and soulless, regardless of their personality or needs. And that's kind of the category I fall into, honestly. But if you measure someone else's life by how much you've gotten around and experienced, then you will measure other people by the same standard naturally just how worldly they've become too if they prefer to stay home and enjoy the comforts of their routine then you will judge them as incurious ignorant unambitious regardless of their aspirations of who they really are and why does this really matter well it matters because if we believe we're hard workers and we earned everything we have then we believe that everyone else earned what they have too. And if they have nothing, it's because they earned nothing. If we believe we're set up to just fail, you know, fail for pro you know, fail for any success, like we're just doomed for poverty and we deserve minimum wage jobs, then we also believe that others are destined for minimum wage jobs, paying unemployment, and that stinks. Because honestly, if we believe our values comes from faith in a higher power, then we will view others by their faith or their lack of faith in a higher power. If we measure our self-worth by our intellect and use reason, then we will judge others through the same lens. And this is why people who are entrepreneurs, I think, tend to think that everyone else should be an entrepreneur. Or this is why people that are actors tend to believe that everyone should be an actor. 
Or this is why, well, maybe atheists tend to believe that everyone should be an atheist. And this is why hardcore actors try to logically argue about not following the crowd and instead advocate, follow your dreams. And the sad part, it's kind of why, well, racists often claim that everyone should be racist too. And they just don't know it. That it's scary that, well, sometimes if all we see is this sort of racism in the world, then we feel like everyone's racist. It's why fitness buffs justify their obsession to go into the gym by saying, fitness is saving me money on hospital bills, bro. <laughs> I'm one of them, though. And if you're one of them, that's cool. Even though behind the scenes, some people are inje injecting synthetic drugs in their, well, heinies. I guess you could say, to make it look as hard as a turtle shell. And this isn't to say that judging is wrong. There are plenty of values worth judgment. I judge people who are really mean and malicious, and I judge a person for the energy they admit. You know, I, sometimes I see, for example, police officers who will speed up to catch up to you, to give you a ticket, for speeding, but that is just a reflection of what? Two wrongs make a right? I don't know. I'm not trying to solve every world problem here. I'm just trying to make you think a little bit differently about your belief systems. You know, I judge fitness and health within myself. Honestly, I don't take drugs. I just don't want to take steroids. Just not my thing. But I'm no perfect health nut. I still use fake sugars. I drink three monsters a day. But these are just traits that I will not tolerate within myself. Therefore, these are traits I'm wary of. And I will perpetually try to modify. But honestly, hypocrisy is the thing that grinds my gears. Because when I see people that are huge health nuts but then as they're saying that hey man you got to be super healthy and do this they don't even open themselves up to the idea of maybe just not being super healthy to have metabolic adaptation that's where you're super healthy but every once in a while you have a chocolate chip cookie you know but this is all a choice you know this is a choice we all are making, whether we realize it or not, and we should make those choices consciously and not make them a habit. You know, people who think they're ugly look for all the ways people around them are ugly, and why people who are lazy slack off look for all the ways others cut corners and slack off as well. It's why corrupt officials choose to be corrupt. Because they assume everyone else is as corrupt as they are. That's why cheaters choose to, well, cheat. Because they assume everybody else is going to cheat even if given the chance to, well, cheat. And this, this is hard to swallow. I get it. <laughs> Many of us sometimes don't even get to choose our perspective lens. But I'm telling you right now, you can when you're a child, well, you don't really have the choice. Monkey see, monkey do. You know what I love, though? I love that as a species, we can learn. We have the ability to learn. And I'm not just saying that lightly. Like yesterday... I could have drank three monsters, but then I see a study, and I realize how bad it is. Or maybe I feel it finally. And sometimes that's what it takes, a huge, well, problem. Like you're, 
constantly anxiety, constantly depressed, constantly down, thinking negative thoughts in order to actually change. And sometimes suffering is the only way to find salvation. You know what? I love the quote. Everyone is either trying to prove or disprove who they were in high school. Because for many of us, our perspectives are defined by how people view us growing up. We develop a fixation in one area of our lives because it's the area which we felt people judged us the most. The high school cheerleader who is afraid to lose her looks as an adult, or the poor kid obsessed with becoming richer, or the loser who wants to throw the biggest parties ever, or... I hate to use this word, the slacker, but the slacker who wants to prove to everyone how smart he is. A big part of our development is to recognize our own fixation, to recognize how we really measure ourselves and our self-worth. But another big part of this development is to become aware that everyone has their own way of seeing things. And that's really the biggest learning that you can take from all of this is to just become more aware of your own perspectives on things. If they're not the same as you, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. But at the end of the day, even if they're not the same as you, you've got to choose yourself. You may view the world through a certain career value. But some people don't. You may view the world through the lens of attractiveness, but most people do not. You may view the world through the lens of family values, but most people do not. You may view the world through the positivity and optimism, but some people just don't look at optimistic things. And for those people, I don't know what to tell them. Because I know that Pessimism was never a good road for me to travel. But the main thing is I've got to accept people. And most importantly, i got to accept myself. Even more importantly, I think you have to accept yourself. It's necessary for developing strong boundaries and deciding who you want to be and who you want to be a part of. What tribe do you want to be a part of? Who do you really, 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 really admire? But this doesn't make you absolutely just totally intolerant to failure. Well, failure is kind of a good thing. So if you're asking yourself, what should I do? Well... I say choose yourself. You must accept that you cannot change a person's values for them. Just as we must find our own perspectives to look through. And our own beliefs to have. But if you're someone who is constantly going from thing to thing. From career to career. From self-deprecation to self-deprecation, well, then I have a offer for you. Share it with the world. If you're having a hard time deciding on what vehicle you want to share this at, like whether it be writing or podcasting, I believe that you already know. You already know. And if you don't know, well, then you can learn. With all that said, I believe that you're enough and you matter. And if you have a story to share, please don't hesitate. Take the action today. And even if you fail, well, 
when you don't get what you want, you learn. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. To also leave a review. Let me know exactly in that review what you're thinking. What's on your mind about this podcast? If this at all kind of, I don't know, shakes you up a bit, let me know. Or if this isn't helping you at all, let me know too. I know for a fact that this isn't always for everyone. Just like cookies aren't for everyone. Just like being attractive to everyone isn't for everyone. And that's kind of what's amazing. It doesn't matter how great you are. What matters is your uniqueness. If you're the most unique you, well, hey, there is no competition. All right. Take care, my friends, and don't ever forget. You matter, and you're enough. And please, please, please share this if you found value from this. I really appreciate it. I want to help you share your message. Reach me at LoganTylerNelson.com. It's my first time really advertising that, so this is scary to even say, but please reach out to me. I'd love to help you with your message. Can I say it one more time? You matter and you're enough? Okay. Maybe it'll really stick in your head because it's true.